won't be an exact five because some of them are running neck and neck. But if we had to start today, we would start Gabe Watson at the one. Um, we would start uh, Ladavius Drain at the two. Those guys are going to start. Uh, Artur Konatsik at the three. We would start uh, Leonard, Leonard Harper uh, Baker at the, at the four. And if uh, either Bobin or, or Tyler Stevenson at the five. I, so wow. that would be almost a flip of the coin. Uh, right now, Tyler probably running a little bit ahead. He's, he's, he's quicker. Uh, uh, whereas Bobin's got a little more bulk, could have a lot to do on who we were playing. Uh, Tyler looked pretty thin as a freshman. Has he put in the work? Yes, there? I, I've been incredibly impressed with our. I have to give Alex Richard, our strength and conditioning coach, uh, uh, a lot of credit. One thing that's always been important to me personally throughout my coaching career, strength and conditioning, and he has really helped us, uh, our players. I, I mentioned Hunter Dean. Hunter Dean during June and July came in as a typical tall, frail high school. Big, uh, somewhat on the thin side. He gained 23 pounds. I'm not sure where he has since then, but he gained 23 in June and July. Good weight, strong weight. Tyler's been the same way. He he looks like a different young man. Given us a full year in that re that training cycle, and then obviously you start looking at two and three years down the road. Um, you know that that's going to make a huge difference from him. This is a very athletic, bouncy a kid that can really run and, and, and add in the necessary strength, the right type of strength. Uh, just going to make him a better player, but he, Pat, he, if, when you see him, you're going to be you'll be surprised as the comparison to last year. In your experience, what are the main difficulties in it being your first year at a place? Uh, you know, they I think this gets thrown around too much, Alan. The changing culture, you know, they oh we're going to change, got to change the culture and all that kind of stuff. It's just a different culture. You know, I've I've got the greatest admiration and respect for Coach Sadler, and, and I thought Coach did a great job of mitigating a a very challenging situation here. Um, but there's just a different way of doing things, you know, and it's, it's just a it's, it's different style of play, different expectations. Um, and, and I think that the way we, we play, I, I don't think is a, uh, I, I like to think that we, we, we like to use our head a lot. And we, we play strategically and we, we, we like to run good offense, meaning that, you know, we want, we want to run offense that, that helps our best shooters get the most shots. So that varies a little bit. We're not just a vanilla type team. And, um, you know, just some of the things that y'all, from y'all's position, knows, well, like Pat asked, is, is drain. Well, you know, it doesn't take, I don't think it's rocket science to figure out who your best players are. If it, it is sometimes a little more, you want to make sure that your team understands if our philosophy is this, if you're going to battle, and you want your, uh, you, you want to fire off your cannon more than you fire off your BB gun, so to speak. And, and sometimes as a co getting college players to understand that, and especially the first year, and what I mean by that is defining roles. And, you know, uh, one thing that we gave everybody a blank canvas when we walked in, and they were sitting right in the room that you're sitting in, we talked about everybody having a blank canvas. that Because I didn't have any prejudice either way, good or bad, toward any of the players. I, I didn't know. I didn't know anything. They may have been in Doc's dog, dog house, maybe not. It didn't matter to me, but I knew that we had mostly new faces. And so, you know, what we've been able to do is say, you know, the, the, your, your conditions that you play under are not conditions that I've set, it's conditions that you've set maybe from the time that you've started playing basketball. Can you, can you dribble? Can you pass? Can you shoot it? Can you shoot the three, play inside? What we want to do is define all that and put, put us and our team in the best position to win. So, uh, <laughs> I hope that a roundabout way, Alan, answered your question there. It's, it's very difficult uh, uh, early on, um, and it just takes time. So the biggest challenge in terms, I, I, again, I'm not to overuse the phrase changing the culture, it's setting our culture and setting the standards and values that we that have been successful for us in the past and that, that we think are going to be successful here and how we go about doing things every day. At this point in the, in the tenure, are you – Pleased, or are, are you where you expected to be as far as instituting your culture? Yes, uh, we. I've been very pleased. We've had very, very little uh, kickback. It's it's a very similar situation that uh, that we inherited. I think at Southeastern Louisiana with a, a team that had lost a lot of players that had had a, a background in the background of probation and uh, scholarship reductions, and it was just beginning to emerge out of that. Um, so, uh, very familiar, uh, and, and what we want to do is lay the foundation, very confident in what we're doing, lay the foundation 
for future success where we can compete every year. And to do that, it's, it, it's certainly recruiting is obviously the, the most integral part, but it's also how you go about doing things every day, having, having a great expectation in every phase of their, of their life. Uh, our goal is to develop great young men, uh, uh, students that, that, great, that, uh, that achieve to the best of their ability to make sure that they're prepared academically to go on and, and, and get their college degree here from our, our great university and move on and be successful later on in life when the ball stops bouncing and then develop them to the best of their ability as basketball players. And that takes a lot of work and it takes, it takes a lot of people to help them do that. And what we want them to simply do, to put it in simple terms, is we want them to understand that we are going to expect and demand their absolute best in every phase of their life. That, that's our job to help them reach their potential. So we want them to give to understand that we're not going to tolerate a second, uh, that anything less than their best effort on the floor, but also anything less than their best effort in the weight room, classroom, uh, the way they carry themselves outside of those times. Uh, that, that it, it's just a, it's, it's a deep commitment to do that. And uh, that, that's, that's really, I think, how you set your standards and, and that you establish a championship culture. So it's not really a much about what well, we're changing the culture because I think sometimes that throws shade at who, at, at anything that was before. We're just we're setting our own standards and values and creating the culture that we expect. They've had success last year. What does Stevenson offer the coaches? What, is, what, what does he offer? Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what, what would he quit? <laughs> I tell you where it was just, again. Uh, being at Southeastern Louisiana, and but obviously being a Mississippi native, we recruited the same, you know, Mississippi really hard there. And that was a young man that, that, that we, we recruited and were very familiar with. He has come a long way. Um, uh, I tell you where, where he's really developed, uh, his offensive game has gotten a lot better. He, he was just a uh, catch and go dunk it kind of guy, you know, right there around the rim. Now he, now he can face up. He, he shoots the mid-range jumper really well. Uh, and he just plays so hard and he's active. You know, would I w wish he was 6'9", 6'10", absolutely. But, um, but with his added bulk and, again, his, his quickness. So, you know, one thing we talked to him about is play to your strength. Play, don't, you're not going to be able to get in there in a, in a, a wrestling match with a, a much bigger, bigger body. But by the same token, he's going to have a hard time staying with you as a, as a, with your foot speed and quickness and your bounce. Uh, Angel Smith, where things stand with you. Angel, and we have we you know Angel came in here as a young man that had very very high expectations. When we still have a high expectations from him, he he's had a little harder time adjusting, I think, to the uh, demands of Division One basketball. And I know y'all are going to try to read between the lines of what I'm trying to say there, but he but he's 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 just beginning. I thought last week was really the best week he's had so far. He's just beginning to figure out. I've got to bring it every day. Now you're talking about a guard that's six five. He can really shoot the basketball. Beautiful shoot and touch. Top twenty player in Florida coming out of high school. Um, and so he he's a young man that's got a great future here. And I still think he has a great future. Uh, and I was very encouraged with the way he finished last week. So we're really expecting a lot of things out of him. Where it is, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the other teams and and maybe running. What, uh, what kind of basketball are you going to have? We have a, a simple philosophy, Alan. Again, I want to go back to it's important that we uh, get the basketball into the guy's hands that can do the most damage. So it's not, democ it's not democratic, okay? Um, and then there's a, there is a misconception <coughs> that playing fast means lack of structure. Uh, you know, oh, we're gonna, it's just it's a blacktop game, and you know the, the they're just going to run up and down the floor. That's that's not it at all. But for instance, with a guy like Drain, uh, with Davius Drain, he's going to do most of his damage in transition. And the reason is, is in in the half court set, everybody in the world that we play knows that he's going to be able to shoot the basketball. They're going to be locked into him. A lot of times, the best way to get an open three, a couple of times, are are in that that. Uh, uh, stage of the game, for instance, as the basketball is rebounded down before you can get one out of fast break, a lot of times you can get one after offensive rebound. We work on kick, kick, rebound, and if you can't score it right back, throw it back out during that kind of chaotic time for the defense before they're truly set. It'll be very, it'll be much more difficult, and that's when you'll start seeing us run more half-court offense to get guys like that shots. 
So to answer your question, yes, we're gonna we wanna we wanna push the basketball at every opportunity, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're gonna go down there and throw up a quick shot. So we wanna have the, the philosophy of score early or score late. Meaning if we can get the if we can get him, Gabe, a Gabe Watson, a shot quickly out of transition because they're open, not forced, and there'll probably be a lot of substituting. You'll probably hear a lot of horns going off with subbing and if if we if we shoot a contested shot or shoot a wrong shot, uh, that, that doesn't give us an opportunity to score as good. Because we, I don't think that we, with our youth, I don't think we, we have a tremendous amount of firepower. So we, 